This is Eagle Al, and today I will be talking about the Eagle signing a new punter. Also, the benefits of starting to a no Jalen Carter comparisons to these goats. And let's just get straight into it. All right. So um, before we get straight into it, you know, I usually make the banners at the bottom for the topics, but this one came up pretty fast. I was just happened to be on my phone while setting up and I seen the Eagles sign the new punter to the practice squad. Brandon Mann. Brandon Mann is on the practice squad. So Aaron D's numbers are disappearing. His numbers is being counted down. I think the Eagles might pull the plug on the Aaron Sippos. Now, I will say this. The Eagles are so confusing, in my opinion. We are so confusing. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to hold y'all. Aaron Sippo's been playing his best football. He literally been playing his best football. Last time I checked, I could be wrong, but he was ranked in the top 10 of punters. He was ranked in the top 10 of punters. And now we're deciding to cut bait. To me, that made absolutely no sense. But... Aaron Sippos is Aaron Sippos. Maybe he falls into that 20, 30 yard punts, but he's literally in the top 10 of punters right now. And we're letting him go or more than likely letting him go. I do like Brandon Mann over him. Eagles wanted him. Remember, we put in a uh, claim for him, but I think the Steelers went over us and he went to Pittsburgh and they released him. So now it look like he will be with the Philadelphia Eagles. I know a lot of people are happy about this because, um, at the end of the day, you can't trust Sipples, but these past two weeks, he's been playing the best football. So I don't know. The replacement they should be looking for right now is actually, you know what? The replacement is on the roster. It's for Covey. Covey fumbled. A lot of people told me Covey don't turn the ball over. I'm like, look, he keep taking hits like that. He's going to fumble. He's going to fumble. It's only in a matter of time. And we got lucky. Keely Ringo been up special team specialist like i think he better than zach mcpherson on special teams like he been cooking on special teams so um shout out to keely ringo for recovering the fumble um but again man brandon man at one point i think he was ranked five by pff as everyone know <laughs> aaron simples last year was ranked 28th but I, I i simply don't get the eagles the man playing his best football but i decided to let him go Calling for his job all last year, calling for his job all offseason. He actually gets in the game and play good. And Michael Clay say, nope, you're out of here. Oh, well, I mean, maybe he sees something Brandon Mann can do. Or maybe we just had him Brandon Mann stashed this whole time knowing we was going to sign him just to see what Aaron Sippel is going to do. Not sure. But it's very, very confusing to me, in my opinion. But let's get into the topics today. Um... Go get Buddha Baker. Go get Buddha Baker. Yes. Also, another thing I seen just before making this video, my guy Jeff Kerr from CBS and Words on the Birds took his quote. And he was saying, like, the Eagles are open to getting the safety. Like, we know that. We know we need a safety. But Buddha Baker might not be available or isn't available. But come on, we got Howie Roseman. Howie Roseman. And I'm sorry, man. I hear nothing about Buda Baker being hurt, right? And Thomas R. Peterson was thinking the same thing I was thinking. I hear nothing about Buda Baker being hurt. But I said Buda Baker was suddenly added to the injury report on Friday. Suddenly. And he's out. So, in my opinion, it looked like they saving him so he don't get hurt. And maybe the... Uh, Arizona Cardinals is just trying to stack up on draft capital and maybe they move on from Kyler Murray and actually get a quarterback now the Cardinals are bad yes but I can't say they are a little competitive I will give them that but you don't like the Giants come back from 20-0 you don't let Sam Howell beat you so um yeah the Arizona Cardinals competitive I believe they're going to give Jonathan Gaynor another shot just from being competitive and if he could get the draft capital and also get like Caleb from USC and those one of those quarterbacks, I think Mays or something like that. If he could get one of those quarterbacks and really turn the Arizona Cardinals around, maybe 
Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we can do it. And they maybe use Buda Baker try to get a fourth out of us. Yeah, maybe they get a fourth out of us if we wanted uh Buda Baker because again he's the missing piece. When I watched back the game, uh our last week game with the Vikings, what I seen was is that it wasn't the safeties were playing really good. The safeties just got really lucky. Like for example, Avante Mattis forced the fumble on on the running back and Justin Nevis was just happened to be there to recover. That's nice, but that looked good on Justin Nevis part of the game. Edmonds, right? Justin Jefferson beat us deep and that was Edmonds responsibility. So Justin Jefferson made a bad play trying to reach for the pile lines instead of tucking it in and just getting it to the one. But they count that as an Edmonds forced fumble and we we getting the ball back and the turnover by Justin Jefferson due to what Edmonds did, but he really did nothing. He just pulled his hips, tried to keep him out the end zone, and Justin Jefferson made a bonehead play. And people would call that good safety play. It, it really wasn't. I will get Justin Evans this. I think he's a good special teamers. I mean, he forced the fumble on special teams. That's where he should be at. These dudes that we have are not elite. Maybe maybe Sidney Brown can do it, but it again it's criminal. I said this in my last video. It's criminal that guys like Sidney Brown is not getting enough time. These dudes that we have now are not gonna move the needle. They're not. I know a lot of people like Jeremy Chen, but I'm not even a fan of Jeremy Chen. No, he's average. Look at the numbers. Jeremy Chen is average. If you're gonna go get a safety and you need a guy that can turn stuff around. The only guy I'm thinking of is the guy in Tennessee, Bayer, but he signed a new contract or restructured his. Buddha restructured his too, but Arizona are sloppy. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to trade him anyway. Uh, I'm counting on the sloppiness to try to trade him. And Buddha Baker, Baker is so hybrid due to the lack of sl slot corner. We damn near don't got no slot corner now. Buddha Baker can fill in that role. I do miss CJ Garner Johnson for that because when Avante Maddis went out last year, CJ Garner Johnson did a one hell of a job in the slot. What was though we had Reed Blankenship and we had um what's his name? Epps playing safety, and we really had CJ Garner Johnson playing the slot, and he did a really good job. So now we're lacking that. Edmonds can't not a Basically a slot corner. Edmonds can't do that. He can't cover. Reed Blankenship can do it in a way, but you don't want to pull Reed Blankenship from the top like that as safety. No. And we know damn sure Justin Evans can't do it because I seen him get cooked by a tight end. So, again, man, if you're going to do it, get a superstar. Get a superstar. Don't, don't, don't get another mediocre guy. All right. Uh... Let's get into this Jalen Carter, Jalen Carter comparisons. All right. So rookie watch, shout out to them. They said Jalen Carter been through two games and has been a nightmare for opposing offensive lines. Carter is now up to 11 pressures, 10 hurries and a sack has played less than 50% of the defensive snaps. He doing all that with less than 50%. So, this puts Jalen Carter on pace for 93 and a half pressures, 85 hurries, and eight and a half sacks. For reference, Chris Jones had 97 pressures and 63 hurries last season. Crazy to think that eight players were taken ahead of this guy. I agree. I agree with everything the rookie watch said. And let me also put my guy word on the birds again. Show the comparison with Aaron Donald's rookie year and Jalen Carter's rookie year. And these are projections for Jalen Carter, obviously. And this is what Aaron Donald finished with. See, my thing is, is that think about if Jalen Carter was on another team and he played like 80 percent of the snaps, like his numbers will be insane. His numbers is insane now playing less than 50 percent of the snaps. So I like it like that because it keep his legs fresh and he's always 100% ready to go. That's the benefit of being on the Eagles. But those numbers, man, 
Those numbers are great. Everybody say his week one was really good, but his week two was okay. But he was getting double team. He was getting double team. And I believe he did one hell of a job being double team. So the comparisons with Chris Jones, who's a GOAT, you seen the uh the Chiefs defense take another step forward with Chris Jones, so he was definitely needed. And we already know what Aaron Donald is with the Rams. And I think he's just going to be that impactful with us as well. All right. And lastly, let's talk about the benefits of being 2-0. A lot of people keep telling me, you know, it's just two games. It's two games for a lot of teams. All right. So here go the key points of being 2-0. You see, it's a 63% chance of making it to the playoffs. It's just good to have a fast start. So you see the list of teams. I don't know. I think the commanders might be in that 40 percent, that 39, 37 percent. I'm not making it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying the commanders ain't it. But all seriousness, man, uh, there are huge benefits of being 2-0. So starting out 2-0, again, more than likely your team is going to make it to the playoffs. And. Also, I understand what other people are saying, too. It is only two games, and a lot of us are still trying to figure out our teams. But it's best to figure them out while they're 2-0 and and not 0-2 because 0-2 decreases your chances a lot, uh, at least making it to the postseason, especially how the NFC East is moving. Washington is 2-0. and No matter who their competition is, I think Denver is trash. And I believe Arizona Cardinals is trash, but you only can play who's on your schedule. And they're 2-0. They handle their business. Eagles, I think we play one of the best defense, or if not the best defense in the NFL, and the Patriots, and we was able to pull off a win because i seen the Patriots shut down the Dolphins too. That waddle and that hill jump did not work there, but they don't have an offense. i seen us beat them, squeeze out with a win. And I seen us beat a high power offense in the Vikings and we scored a lot of points, but we're still trying to figure it out. I, I would say the Cowboys, it's hard to say that, but yeah, they blew teams out 70 to 10 basically in the last two weeks. But when I watch them, it's still something off. Like they still need to get their offense going beginning of the season. So and, and the Giants just that was one lucky lu- one lucky break, but they played a 49ers and they might not have Saquon Barkley. So we'll see if they'll be able to pull a miracle like that off again. I highly doubt it. But again, man, and they're not even 2 0. But again, there are some benefits of starting fast, a lot of benefits. And yeah, man, that's all I got today. But hey, man, what do you think and how do you feel? And if any news come out today or later today, I will go ahead and put it out. But this is Eagle Al. I'm up. A-